Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Friday and happy Groundhog Day as well. Hope we're all having a wonderful end to the work week here. And luckily, uh, all things considered, things are pretty tame out there for the most part. Now, out west, things are a bit more active as we uh, do have a pretty powerful storm system working on through. And we will have a little bit of severe weather as well. Uh, but considering, you know, kind of how active I feel like the past couple months have been, we're going to get into a bit of a nicer stretch here over the next week or so before I think going into the middle of the month, uh, things could change pretty big time. And I'll let you know if Punxsutawney Phil is kind of in the same thinking as me or if he's a little different uh, with his prediction of an early spring. Alrighty, um, now I will also ask if you haven't uh, subscribed, excuse me, uh, definitely consider doing so. Like the video if you like it and share it with somebody that you think might find it interesting. I think we're only about 30 or 40 subscribers away now from 8,000, which is a super cool uh, high uh, you know, number. And uh, you know, again, just super exciting times for the channel here over the past couple months. So thank you so much for that. Um, with that said, though, I think we can go ahead and jump right into it. I will mention this video will probably be a little bit shorter than uh, normal. Uh, again, we are in a little bit of lull, and also I have a lot of homework today. So, um, you know, I'm going to try to kind of barrel on through this one a little bit and get all the information I can to you in kind of a timely manner. So with that said, I'll stop rambling on and start talking about the weather. All right, so on satellite imagery here, again, we do have a bit of an active kind of a pattern out west. This storm system that kind of moved in yesterday, continuing to bring in uh, some of these scattered showers and snow showers, depending on elevation. Now, part of that energy here into the Four Corners region is beginning to exit the Four Corners and kind of eject into the plains, if you will, and that will lead to a pretty strong uh, cyclogenesis there at the surface and low pressure forming, and that uh, likely to bring even more snow over the next couple of days, as well as some severe weather potentially to Texas and a lot of rain towards the Gulf Coast. So that's kind of the big pattern we're looking at here over the next couple of days. All right, looking at radar, uh, we do have a little bit of a clipper system working on through the northeast. I mentioned this in yesterday's video, and uh, here we go. Sure enough, it's happening. We've got some scattered snow showers and rain showers here through the I-95 corridor. Snow falling kind of up into Connecticut and uh, Massachusetts, but mainly rain here uh, from Philadelphia up through New York City. Now, further north from there, we are also seeing uh, some scattered precipitation up into New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. So if you're watching from that area, definitely let me know if it's snow or rain falling at your location. Again, kind of all tied into that uh, piece of energy working on through. Now, the more active weather, however, is definitely out west. Again, you'll notice all of these winter storm warnings in the pink and winter weather advisories in the purple for all of that mountain snow on the way. And uh, we also have some uh, high wind warnings and watches out here in kind of these uh, colors down here through New Mexico and Texas. Uh, again, could definitely see some strong winds today as the storm system continues to crank up and strengthen. And same story back here towards uh, the bay there through the San Francisco area. Again, some strong winds this afternoon uh, as that onshore flow is continuing. All right, we're actually going to start out west in today's video. Normally we start east, but today we're going to do it a little different here and kind of uh, talk about uh, this ongoing storm system and what's left of it, and then we'll kind of track it eastbound here uh, within the uh, next couple minutes. So here we go. Uh, this is this afternoon. Again, you'll notice still widespread snow showers in the blue, rain showers in the green, and that just continues to really crank on through much of this afternoon, <clears throat> excuse me, into overnight tonight. And by the time we're getting into early tomorrow morning, uh, for our Saturday morning, again, just more of the same. Uh, now, at this time, low pressure will definitely be a little bit stronger here at the surface over the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle, so uh, definitely expect stronger uh, winds as well as some high snowfall totals here up into this section of the Rockies from Colorado up through Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho as well. Now, we are going to see a little bit of a lull on the west coast itself, I think, uh, tomorrow afternoon for our Saturday. Just kind of scattered precipitation, slowly working through. Uh, but again, really, the mountain snow is going to be a bigger story here, I think, throughout our Saturday afternoon. And then even by the time we're waking up Sunday morning, uh, you know, just a lot of mountain snow continuing. At this point, definitely into the northern Rockies as that piece of energy kind of slides up the mountain chain here, uh, seeing more widespread snow up that way. And then also our next storm system beginning to work in here for our Sunday. But this is as far out as this map goes. All right, snowfall totals over just the next 48 hours. So this is just kind of what's left of this storm system, not including what we're likely to see next week as well here. And uh, again, you'll notice some high snowfall totals here into the mountains of Idaho and uh, Montana and down into Yellowstone National Park as well, likely to get some big time snow out of this. Uh, and even areas further to the south as well. Obviously, the Sierra Nevadas, as we've been talking about, a lot of snow. And again, this is just the next 48 hours, potentially <clears throat> more than three feet of snow in that time frame, not out of the question here. And then also pretty good snowfall totals back through Utah and then to the mountains of Colorado as well. 
All right, uh, now kind of tracking this eastbound a little bit. Today, we do have a severe weather threat through much of Texas, not out of the question uh, with that slight risk of severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center here, and then that marginal risk of severe weather kind of for surrounding areas. And main threats today will be strong straight line winds, Excuse me, a, a couple of isolated uh, storms, including large hail, are not out of the question, and maybe even an isolated tornado or two, uh, definitely possible here throughout the afternoon hours of today, as well as going into tomorrow, uh, where that threat shifts a little bit further southeast into the Houston metro area and into the immediate coastlines of Louisiana. So, again, a couple days of severe weather here, nothing uh, off the charts, but definitely, again, important enough that we need to talk about it and mention it here uh, as we time this out. And uh, speaking of timing this out, here we go. Uh, next 48 hours over the East Coast. Again, this afternoon, I think um, that kind of snow and rain that we're seeing in the Northeast will slowly kind of diminish. Uh, still snowing pretty good there in New Brunswick and uh, Nova Scotia throughout the day today. Uh, so definitely, you know, expecting that snow to continue there. Uh, but outside of there, things stay relatively calm. Now, uh, one place that will be a little more active today, as I mentioned, is that severe weather in Texas. This is going into this afternoon and evening. I'm going to back this up just a little bit more. This is about 2 o'clock Central Time or uh, 1 o'clock Mountain Time, and here we go. You'll notice things still relatively quiet over Texas and Oklahoma, but I move this ahead just a couple uh, more hours here, and we've now got storms firing off into that slight risk area. And again, those will have the potential to bring strong straight line winds, large damaging hail, and a couple isolated tornadoes, not out of the question either. Now, eventually, all those storms kind of congeal into a bit of a QLCS or a, uh, a complex of thunderstorms overnight tonight, and we could see definitely some strong, gusty, um, straight-line winds with that, and maybe even an embedded tornado or two uh, from the Dallas-Fort Worth area southbound and even up through the Red River Valley overnight tonight. And now, by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning, uh, again, this uh, big storm out west continuing to bring heavy rainfall, excuse me, heavy rainfall. I promise I'll get through this video. I'll try my best. <laughs> uh, but heavy rainfall, again, through uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, up through Nebraska, and into uh, sections there of um, eastern Colorado could see some heavy rain as well. Now, severe weather threat tomorrow. Again, tomorrow morning, we'll have to continue to watch this complex of strong storms going through eastern Texas and into the Gulf Coast of uh, Louisiana. Definitely, again, could bring some strong... Uh, storms, including a couple isolated tornadoes, not out of the question. Now, going through the afternoon on Saturday, we're going to get a little bit of a split in the precipitation here. Uh, we're still going to have widespread rain and uh, snow back towards Colorado, uh, Nebraska, and Kansas, uh, but then another kind of uh, piece of energy kind of breaking off here through uh, portions of Louisiana. So, again, a pretty rainy day for our Saturday in both areas, uh, but there will be a little bit of kind of uh, a lull in between. Now, uh, as we go into our overnight Saturday, into our Sunday overnight, uh, again, uh, very heavy rainfall continuing to now stream out of the Gulf of Mexico inland towards Louisiana, uh, southern Mississippi, Arkansas, uh, into uh, sections of Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, even the Ozarks getting some rain out of this overnight Saturday. Now, here we go. Waking up Sunday morning, again, still raining good here through Arkansas, Mississippi, southern Alabama, the Florida Panhandle, and uh, even much of uh, Florida itself likely getting in on very rainy conditions here through much of our Sunday afternoon. As you'll notice, this shield of precipitation just continuing to slowly uh, kind of work off towards the east and bringing plenty of rain with it. Now, as I move this further ahead into time, this is as far out as this model goes, afternoon Sunday into overnight Monday, but you'll notice still raining good here from Arkansas through Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and into Florida. Now, uh, if I try to move this ahead a little bit more, and I will definitely do that with uh, another model here using the GFS starting at the same time frame here, again, you'll notice still raining good for our overnight Sunday. By the time we're waking up Monday, though, uh, this storm system is starting to kind of slowly pull away, moving over Florida. Still definitely rainy Monday afternoon for Florida, likely southern Georgia, uh, maybe even the low country of South Carolina seeing some rain. But after that, uh, things really calm down and the storm system moves away and any kind of snow chances we were looking at uh, within the past couple of days have really died down uh, in the latest modeling. So, uh, unfortunate for you snow lovers and including myself, you know, I was really hoping for it to keep up, but uh, we'll move on to the next storm and hope for the best. But again, it feels like we've been saying that all winter here. Uh, again, though, winter really lasts all the way through March here, so we'll see what happens. But uh, anyway, getting back to what's currently happening. Uh, today's uh, high temperatures, it will be warm. I'll definitely uh, mention that here through the southern tier of the country. We're going to have pretty strong southerly flow ahead of that storm system, and uh, we'll be getting up into the 60s, maybe even close to 70s through much of the deep south from North Carolina through South Carolina uh, into Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas itself, and even into Oklahoma and parts of Kansas 
Uh, it could get some you know, really warm temperatures this afternoon. So get out there and enjoy it, especially if you're not seeing the rain and you're just seeing the nicer temperatures uh, because, um, again, we're going to have some more unsettled weather going into this weekend. So a great day to get out there and enjoy some of that nicer weather before eventually uh, going into Saturday, things cool back down as that rain moves on through and we get some cold air kind of trying to work on in uh, the backside of the Appalachia chain. So again, today's really going to be the peak of the week in terms of nice weather for most folks here, especially east of the Mississippi. All right, that's kind of uh, the current storm system that's ongoing. What's after that? Well, we'll go ahead and move our 500 millibar height anomaly map ahead into time, and here we go. This is going into Monday afternoon, kind of where we left off. Again, here we go, that storm system uh, kind of off the uh, southeast coastline, continuing to slowly work offshore while we have uh, another storm system now working into the west coast. So you folks out there, again, I mentioned it in the past couple videos, it's going to be a good 10-day stretch of on and off active weather. And here we go, another round of it Monday afternoon here, working on in, and eventually uh, that big area of troughing just kind of hangs over the west for a while through much of early next week, bringing scattered rain and snow showers uh, before eventually uh, kind of dying off a little bit. Now, another thing you'll mention through much, or I will mention, and you'll notice through much of uh, next week here, is this big ridge in the east. Again, we've got the trough out west bringing some active weather, but the ridge in the east bringing much warmer temperatures. And I think next week could feel very spring-like, so uh, you might be thinking, well, Punxsutawney Phil is definitely on to something. Uh, but definitely hold your horses, because I do think, again, the next week or so will be relatively above average, especially next week. Uh, but after that, things could change once again. Now, time this out a little bit, uh, starting into uh, kind of early next week. Here we go into next Sunday. You'll notice that next storm system working into the West Coast, once again, bringing more heavy rainfall and very heavy mountain snow. And uh, that continues to work on through. Again, just a very active week through the Rockies next week. This is into Tuesday afternoon, still active out there. While again, we're warming up and uh, calming down in the East Coast. And then here we go into next Wednesday. That storm system slowly trying to work out of the Rockies a little bit. Could bring some unsettled weather towards the northern Great Plains. We'll watch that into next Thursday. Uh, but again, overall speaking, next week looks relatively quiet. Some small storm systems and above average temperatures. Uh, but again, the pattern could change here later on. Now, temperatures uh, moving ahead. Again, we talked about today. We talked about our Saturday. So we'll start off here on Sunday afternoon. Again, definitely uh, some cooler temperatures into the southeast where that storm system's working on through, still bringing heavy rainfall. Uh, but outside of there, again, that above average uh, weather kind of begins to work on in with that ridge. And by the time we're getting into the middle of next week, uh, we've got pretty uh, well above average temperatures through much of the east coast. This is going into next Thursday afternoon. You'll notice uh, those red colors really taken over for much of the country here east of the Rockies, while again blue out west, where we have that troughing with some cooler air and more active precipitation ongoing. And again, those warm temperatures likely hang on into next week, and next weekend could be quite nice uh, for most folks, maybe even pretty spring-like. We'll definitely continue to watch that. All right, snowfall over the next um, kind of 10 days or so. Again, that uh, pattern is showing up pretty good on the snowfall map as well. A lot of snow out west. In fact, we're going to be counting it in feet out here. And if I just hover over some of the mountains here into the Sierra Nevadas, uh, again, a lot of high snowfall totals here. Getting above 100 inches, likely, uh, within the next 10 days or so. And isolated spots, really, are going to see more than that. But just know, if you're in the uh, ro excuse me, the Rocky Mountains, uh, again, I just uh, cannot talk today, uh, but if you're in the Rocky Mountains out west, it is definitely going to be a very active 10-day stretch. While in the east, again, as that ridge builds in here, uh, we're going to continue to just see that above average weather uh, and those uh, warmer than average temperatures working on through and honestly relatively dry as well i think uh, for the next uh, 10 days outside of uh, kind of what we're going to see this weekend all right now all you winter weather fans you're wondering well what has happened this winter we had a bad winter last winter and this winter it hasn't been much better well you're right but again there is still more winter to go so we'll take a look at any potential chances uh, for a turn back to the wintry side of things. And I do think going into the middle of the month, kind of the Valentine's Day time frame, uh, we should get back into a more favorable pattern for winter weather in the east. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to see a blockbuster storm. It doesn't mean we won't see a blockbuster storm. In fact, nobody just knows, uh, to be quite honest, whenever we're this far out. But what I will mention is the pattern, again, does look more favorable as troughing, again, uh, begins to work back into the east and that cold air likely reestablishing itself. So should these two things kind of meet up here with these blue colors showing up on your map, 
could lead to a very active middle of February. And again, I'm thinking February 14th through 20th, uh, that general kind of week there, uh, the week of Valentine's Day, if you will. So again, we'll watch that. We'll see if anything changes and uh, I'll keep you updated. Uh, again, I do appreciate you hanging in there with me. I know this video was a little bit shorter, uh, but as you all know, I'm a very busy person. So uh, again, sometimes got to put school uh, kind of in front of some other things. Uh, with that said though, hope you have a great rest of your Friday and I'll see you all tomorrow.